Okay, so now what we are going to do, it is like called further variance analysis. And sometimes you call it advanced variance, okay, advanced variance. So this is typically F5. This is not something you did it in uh, F2. This is not coming from F2. So in further variance analysis or in advanced variances, you have two types of variance. Uh, One is called mix and yield variance. Mix and yield variance. And the other one is called operational and planning variance. Uh, logically, I should be doing mix and yield first, but I will leave mix and yield later on. First, I will explain you operational and planning variance because it is easy and in fact, very easy. So we are done with that and then we spend time on mix and yield because mix and yield, we need to spend more time. <coughs> Okay, operational and, pl and planning variance is what happens. That uh, what you understand that sometimes what you have in business that you have got your own budget, you make your budget, and in budget you set down the price for something. Okay, let me put it on Excel. I would I would rather prefer to do it on Excel. So here I've got my uh, whatever I call it, like you know my budget. So I have my budgeted price and uh, I make a budget for material for anything. For example, you are you, you may be doing it for material. You may be doing it for uh, how to say labor. You set up a budget for yourself. So you've got here the budgeted numbers. You said that my budget was, I don't know, dollar uh, ten per kilogram, let's suppose if i talk about material so this is your budget and then what you have you've got here actual results so here you've got actual results this is your actual results now what happened that when you set the budget at the beginning of the year it is possible that sometime during the year the company realizes that the budget which was actually set up, that budget was not realistic. So they need to make some revision to the budget. So what you do, you make a revised budget. You make it a revised budget. And the revised budget, and then there is some actual result. Let's suppose when we set it up, it was $10 per kilogram. And then we said, okay, $10 per kilogram is not possible because maybe during the year there are some price changes some currency fluctuations maybe some you know suppliers have increased the price fuel prices have increased many times fuel prices increase during the year so for some reason 10 is not possible now so somewhere in the middle of the year probably in march april or may you you introduced a revised budget and then comes the actual why do we make this revised budget? Because we know that our actual budget is no more realistic. So we need to make a revision. Then what will happen? That end of the year, you, for example, we say that, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it very simple. I'll say that you purchased 1,000 kilograms for 14,000, for $13,500. I'll just keep it very simple, okay? So you purchased 1,000 kilograms for 13,500. Now, you know that if you purchase 1,000 kilograms, so <clears throat> what it should be, for example, I say that probably 1,000 kilograms multiplied by 10 is $10,000. But you are spending $13,500. So there is a big difference. I mean, if you consider that based on your actual number, Based on your actual number and what you did, there's a much big difference. But the thing is that the all of this variance, all of this variance is not, you have to split it. You have to find out the responsibility center because when I asked my procurement department, I say, okay, you spent $3,500 more. And he said, sir, your budget also had a problem. Your budget was also not correct. And that's why we make a revised budget. So then what you say, that between the budget and the revised this thing is called planning variance 
you should remember that planning variance is the result between the budget and the revised budget. And then between revised budget and the actual budget, this is called operational variance. And you have these operational and planning variances in material, labor, overheads everywhere. So I called the procurement guy. I say, why did you spend so much? You know, our budget was just $10,000. And he said that, you know, all of that I'm not responsible because you had a budget revision. I say, okay, fine. If I talk about a budget revision, then 1,000 units multiplied by 12, the cost should be $12,000, okay? So $12,000 should be the cost based on the revised budget. On based on actual budget, it should be $10,000. So now we had actual 10,000. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the budgeted number as 10,000. Revised budget, we said, okay, it should be 12,000. And actual is coming 13,500. So the difference between these two, like 10,000 and 12,000, 2,000 will be called your planning variance. This difference, $2,000. This is your planning variance. So planning variances, you know, the variance which occurred as a result of the wrong planning. You did not plan good. You made it 10. It should be 12. So that is planning variance. It goes to the planning department. And the difference between 12,000 and 13,500, this difference is, difference is probably one, uh, you know, 1,500. It is like 1,500. Okay. Uh, let me erase it. So this difference of 15,000, 1,500, this belongs to called your operational variance. So operational variance is between revised and the actual. So I said to the, to the procurement guy that, see, even if I consider, even if I consider the revised budget, it should be 12,000, you are spending 13,500, still you are spending more. And he will say, okay, for this, I take responsibility. Okay, this is my responsibility. So you've got total variance of 3,500 from 10,000 to 13,500. And this 3,500 is actually split between two, planning and operation. And planning is the difference between the budget and the revised budget. And the operational is like between the revised budget and the actual budget. It is quite simple. It is always like this. So whenever you see a question in exam, uh, and if you ever get confused, just put these things just like you've got budget, you've got revised, you've got actual. Write down the numbers here. Write down the numbers here. And write down the numbers here. Now, how do I write down the numbers? You, know, you, you remember that we say that whenever you calculate things, budgets, you always start with the actual quantity. My actual quantity was 10,000 unit, 10,000 kilograms multiplied by standard price. So it means that it should be 10,000. So, and based on here, it is 10,000, it is 1,000 kilogram multiplied by the budget, which is $12. So this is 12,000. And here it is actually purchased for 13,500. So these are the three numbers you get 10,000, 12,000 based on actual quantity. I'm using the word based on actual quantity. In every case, it should be based on actual quantity. So then you will just make the numbers, this one and this one, the difference. If it is more, it is unfavorable. If it is less, it is favorable. And then the difference between this and this. So this part is called planning. This part is called operation. So you can have planning variances and, and operational variances for sales price, for material, for labor, for everything and anything for which you make budget, you have planning and operational variance. Now that's a further how to say, you know, uh, in-depth analysis of your variance analysis because you got 3,500 variance, but you need to identify that the problem belongs to which part. Problem belongs to planning or problem belongs to operation. So that's planning and, and uh, planning and operational variance. Uh, nothing so serious about that. So let's do an example from this planning uh, and operational variance. <clears throat> so this is from your book, 3.1 example. It says product X had a standard direct material cost in the budget of 
four kilogram of material M at five dollar per kilogram. So you are using twenty dollars of material, which is like purchased four kilogram for five dollars each. So due to disruption of supply of materials to the market, the average market price for material M during the period was 5.50. So you see that you initially you thought it is five. Now it has come up to 5.5 in the market. And it was decided to revise the material standard cost. It was decided to revise the material standard cost to allow for this. So now you are making a budget revision. Now, during the period, 6,000 units of product X were manufactured. They required 26,300 kilogram of material M, which cost 139,390. So now you get the actual results. So you have your budget, you have your revision, and you've got actual. But it says calculate the material price values, material price or actual values. So material price values, but we are doing it on planning and operation and then material usage variables. Uh, usage variance is only for operational. Usage variance you are not doing for planning. The reason being that you only revise the price standard. You said price is 5.5. You did not make a revision to consumption, okay? Four kilogram remains four kilogram. It is possible that sometimes you say that the revised budget production manager comes in and says, you know, we, we must be using 4.5 kilograms, etc. But this has not happened. So the only change is in price okay quantity remains same and therefore uh, sir, for, uh, there is something wrong in your voice there is something. so for material we are doing two variances planning and operation so material price i mean the price variance will be two planning and operation because we revise the standard for usage they will be only operational variance because we did not revise the consumption standard we did not say that more material will be needed so consumption standard remains same so we find out only price variance for material and operational. So let's see how do you do that. You say the original standard cost was four kilogram multiplied by $5, which means 20. The revised standard cost is four kilogram into 5.5, which means 22. So one unit should take 20 as per budget and 22 as per the revision. And you should understand the difference between 20 and 22 will be your planning variance. When you will convert into numbers, you will see that the difference between these two $2 is actually contributing towards the planning difference. So let's see material price planning variance. This is the difference between the original standard price and the revised standard price. Original was 5, 5.5, $5, 0.5 at first. The planning variance, now how many kilograms did you purchase? You actually purchased 26,300 at 139,390. So you will make it like this, that material price planning variance, 26,300 into 0 0.5, because your planning variance was 50 cents. So this is the kilograms which you purchased. So you say $13,150 is your planning variance, the difference between the actual and that, uh, the revised, I'm sorry, the budgeted and the revised. And then you have to find out material price operational variance. And operational variance will be the difference between the 5.5, the revised thing, and the actual. This you can do like this, that 26,300 kilograms should cost. Now here you pay attention, you are using not five, but you, you using 5.5, which is the revised thing. Based on the revised budget, 26,300 should cost 144. They did cost 139. So your operational variance is actually favorable coming. So planning variance was adverse, but operational variance was favorable. So this is quite pretty simple. Then you have to do material usage variance. Now usage, it's only you have operational because there is no price thing like this. So how many units did you make? Now you know from the data that you are going to use, you have to use, for example, four kilogram and per, per unit, and you are making 6,000 units. So I can see that if 6,000 units, it should be like 24,000 kilograms, okay? Very straight. But you are making 26,300 kilograms. So your operational variance, your material usage variance is 2,300 adverse. 2,300 adverse. But of course, this is units. We must multiply it with the dollar value. 
So we go down. So it gives us 2,600 or 2,300, whatever. 24,000 24, it should be. It is 26,300. 2,300 at worst. Multiply with the standard price. Now here you should remember, sometimes students, they make mistake. They start taking the revised budget. Don't take the revised thing. Take the original what you had budgeted, the $5. Don't take 5.5, .5, okay? So take multiply this with 5, which is your budgeted price, and 11,500 will be your operational variance. So now we put the summary. We say that the variances may be summarized as follows. 6,000 units of product x at original cost of 20 should cost 120. This is what it should have done at the original thing. Actual material cost is 139. So there is a 19,390 total spending difference which you are making. I mean, if you consider that your actual plan was $20 per unit for 6,000 should be 120, but you actually spent 139. So there is a total variance of 19,390. How do we split it? Material price variance is 13,150 at worst. Material price operational variance is favorable. Usage variance is again at worst. When you will make a sum total of these three, it should justify this number. It should be equal. So this is your total material variance, which you have broken down into planning and operational variances of price and usage. So this is material planning and operational variance. Definitely not very difficult. Uh, it is quite close to your basic variances, but you just need to remember budget and revised is planning, revised and actual is operational. So we stop it here. It's quite simple. We'll move to the next topic.